So welcome to another episode of Around My House. I um, wanted to show you, this is my thermostat. It's an Echo B thermostat. And um, this one is functioning normal. It's The display is on and I touch it and it responds and I can set the temperature and the mode and all that other stuff. But uh, this today's episode is about um, a problem with the other thermostat in our home. So let me show you that. So here's the other thermostat for the other air conditioner. This is also an Echo B. And notice there's no display, there's nothing going on. I've tried removing it from the wall, letting it sit for a minute or two, plugging it back in, no change. Um, what, we just, what we learned is, is there's a problem with the air conditioner that's causing this to happen. And that's what this video is gonna be about is how I'm gonna go about fixing this problem. There can be many reasons why your thermostat is not working. This is just an example of one of the reasons that I had. So stay with me. So the symptoms I've been having, we've been having for maybe as many as twice a day for the past four, five, six days. It's been extremely hot outside. And um, when I came up to the air handler here in our attic, you can see the air handler here. The first thing I noticed was there was this red light on. I've had several air conditioning units in, across multiple homes in my life, and I've never seen this before, and I think it's a great idea. This is a um, overflow float switch um, a safety overflow float switch that if there's too much condensation going on inside the air handler um, it'll trip the switch it's kind of like a bilge pump on a boat when there's uh, enough water it turns on the pump in this case if there's too much water it turns off the air conditioning unit so it's fantastic to see and I'll cover my flashlight that there's a light on on this device to tell us that it's tripped otherwise I'd be guessing so for the last several days, I've been coming up here and checking and finding that there's not a whole lot of water in there. Um, maybe we'll be able to see. So as I remove it, um, yeah, I don't know if you can tell, there's hardly any water in there at all. Um, and notice that I've removed the switch and the light is still on. And it shouldn't be because when the float is in the down position, it should turn it off. And if I play with it enough, maybe jiggle it around, there, now it's off. So that's when I realized, I think the problem's with the switch. Now the switch is a great thing to have, this float switch, because it prevents you from, um, from your condensation overflowing the drip pan that's capturing that condensation and draining it outside um, so that's great but I don't have a flooding problem I don't have an over condensation problem it appears that there's a malfunction in the switch so what I've done is see I, it already turned back on I want it to stay on actually because I'm going to be working on it and I don't want the air conditioner to come on don't worry we'll be turning off the power and stuff too so I went online and I looked at the, um, sorry about that. So I went online and I looked at the information on the side here and matched that to a product on Amazon and I purchased it. Purchased it. it was about $27 or $25. Yeah, maybe that helps. And it says it's a, um, um, a condensate safety overflow switch. And this particular one has this LED light on it. And I like that feature because that immediately tells me what's going on. So I purchased this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this switch with the new one. And something that you should note maybe is in my case, there's a, an overflow pan underneath the air conditioner unit in case that switch doesn't work or if it floods too quickly, which is great because we don't want it leaking through the ceiling because I'm up in the attic. But there's actually another float switch here. And that's in case this pan gets full. So what they've done is they've kind of done a three-way switch here. 
they've taken the two wires from this float switch and the two wires from this float switch and joined them together and made one huge circuit. So if either one of these gets tripped, it cuts off the air conditioner. All right. So my plan is, is I don't want to open up this panel and get involved with all of the, the, the control panel and all the other stuff inside. I'm just literally going to splice this unit in line with uh, uh, the existing splice right here, and then I'll make a new splice right here. Of course, the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we turn off the power to the air conditioner. We don't want to be screwing around. This is a 60 amp circuit. Um, you do not want to be messing with that. So first thing I'll do is I'll turn off the power, and you'll see that by doing so, I have also turned off that light and it's not coming back on no matter what I do. So I've, I've effectively removed power to this system. So let's go ahead and get started. It's going to be a very simple installation. I hope it works. And uh, like I said, we're just going to splice the wires in of the new one into the old one. Okay. I'm going to set up the camera and show you what I'm doing. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this existing float switch and I'm going to peel away this tape which they've just literally used so that there's aren't any dangling wires. Hopefully I'll be able to reuse this tape. And then there's another piece of tape up here that's also holding it so there's no dangling wires. There we go and now I've got easy access to the existing splice. Just want to make sure I've got this on camera. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and Remove this splice by removing this electrical cap. And then I've brought my wire cutters. And I'm going to go ahead and clip this other wire about the same spot. And then we're just going to strip it. Get my glasses on. See if that will help at all. I'll strip this so that we can splice into it. There we go. And I'm just making the, the wires clean. And then I'm going to open up our replacement product. which luckily comes with some um, wire nuts and just undoing the wire holds it together they've probably given us more than enough wire which is great in case I screw up and they've given us the the threaded in piece that um, that threads into the drip pan and then that is you just slide this housing on well I've already got that in fact I can just reuse the housing so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this switch from the um, from the housing I'm just gonna reuse the existing housing that I have if I find there's a problem later I'll I'll use the housing but there's nothing wrong with that housing alright so the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of get an idea of how long the wire should be. So I'll put this in place. I'll go ahead and put this wire back under the tape that it was on there before. I brought some duct tape in case I need to do that again. And then come up to these two wires. I'm going to give myself an extra six or eight inches. Cut that. And go ahead and um, split these wire pairs from each other. Hope you can see this. Split these wire pairs, and I'm just going to gently strip them. There we go. Twist the ends. And then we're just going to marry them to the existing wires. Again, I've turned the power off. So here's our existing wires. 
I don't think it matters. I don't think there's a plus and a minus. So go ahead and twist them in a clockwise fashion. Actually, I just saw a video on this, the correct way to um, use a wire nut. Um, so we'll twist those in place. Um, I'll use the new wire nuts that came with it. Okay, so I'll go ahead and take these wire nuts out. It's getting hot up here already. So we'll complete this one connection. Twist it on like you're screwing on a, a nut. And we'll twist these two together. And twist on our wire nut. I'm pretty sure this is a low voltage system, so I'm not too worried. And then I'll just put it back under the tape like it was before, just to keep anything from dangling. And there's our connection. I think it's as simple as that. Um, and now I'm gonna go ahead and power up the air conditioner. And hopefully we see, as we do, that there is no light on this, uh, um, this sensor, this float switch. And if I take it out and push the plunger down, now we have a light. In fact, it doesn't come on for quite a long time. There has to be a lot of water for that to come on. So I think this was our problem. So as simple as that, um, again, you could have another problem that's causing your thermostat not to come on and your air conditioner not to come on. In my case, I've been monitoring this for several days and this is always this light has come on I highly recommend this float switch with a light so that way you know that it's been tripped because otherwise if there's no light you don't know if the float switch has been tripped or not so I think we've got it in fact the dehumidifier is just turned on and um, I'll go downstairs and I'll show you that the thermostat is booting that Ecobee th thermostat takes a few minutes to boot up it calibrates it's talking to the system and all this other stuff. It's also networkable, so it's getting connected to the network. It takes a few minutes to boot up, but I'll show you that when we're done. So crossing our fingers, um, we'll see if this works. I'll give it a day or two before I post this video to make sure that uh, we got the solution, got the, the results that we wanted. So we're back downstairs from the attic. I replaced that float switch and the light was off. I powered back on the system and you can see my Echo B thermostat is, uh, has booted. Currently says calibration. Um, after a few minutes or so, it'll eventually um, turn the air conditioner on and we will be back to normal. All right, well, welcome back. Well, it turns out it wasn't just the float switch. I still think the float switch uh, was part of the problem because it was just too sensitive, but I let it go a few days with the uh, new float switch and found the system turned off again. This time the water was higher and the float switch worked as it was supposed to. Uh, then I came out here. This is where the condensation line or condensate line comes out and You can see this white kind of gunky gooey stuff coming out um, I've what I needed to do was I needed to clear this line So I used a wet dry vac or shop vac and I set the line out to get the majority of the stuff out um, And I'll show you how I did that on another air conditioner because I have two um, just so you know how I did it and that was just to, to clean out the line as best I could but the other thing we need to do is we need to put some of those um, those treatment tablets which I'll show you in a minute we need to put some of those treatment tablets in the condensate tray so that um, we don't get this gunk this gunk I've been told is uh, um, a yeast and or a bacteria of some sort and it doesn't just go away by itself you need to treat it otherwise we're gonna have the same problem by the way, since I've cleared the line with the wet dry vac, um, it's been several weeks and I haven't had any problems. But I want to go to the extra step and make sure I'm treating the pipe so it doesn't get uh, clogged up again. All right, so let's go vacuum the other line so I can just show you how I did it. Okay, so as I said before, um, I have multiple air conditioners, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, vacuum this line out so I can show you what I did. Now this one, you can see that there isn't any weird discoloration coming out of it but um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, suck this pipe out anyway so that um, just in case anything's built up all right 
Um, the other AC is our, our main, our primary air conditioner. It gets the most use, and that's probably why it's having the problem. This is a secondary AC. So this is very simple. I have my shop back here, and um, this, uh, this uh, elbow right here is really to just keep critters and stuff from falling inside the drain. And in my case, it's not even glued to the surface. Now when I look at this, you can see that there is stuff in the stuff in the pipe. Um, it's kind of milky and it's got like uh, dust maybe in it or something. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but we're going to clear it out anyway. So let me set this back down. And I'm just use my wet dry vac. And I'm going to place it over the top here with the suction on and I'm going to try to close the gap as much as I can so that I get the maximum suction. Um. see what we ended up sucking out of there yeah you can see uh, it's pretty dirty um, but it's not full of love a lot of particulates which is the good news um, and there isn't any um, like gelatin stuff that was coming out of the other one so um, so this is just simply how I've cleared this drain um, and I cleared the other one this way but the next step is we're gonna put the tablets in the system to help treat the water so that we don't get more of this, uh, this yeast or bacteria or whatever it is. All right, so we'll have to go upstairs in the attic for this one, hooray. All right, so welcome back. We're in my favorite room of the house, the attic. It's probably about 95 degrees up here. Um, so we've seen the air handler before. Over here was the float switch. Um, we've got all of the, uh, the hoses and um, connectors and stuff into the system on this panel right here. So I'm guessing that this is the panel I need to remove uh, to get access to the tray. Um, before we do anything, of course, I've already turned the air conditioner off at the thermostat. And I'm also going to turn it off here at the, um, at the uh, circuit breaker. So that should keep everything off there. And then um, I'm using a, I believe this is a 5 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths driver bit to remove these um, nuts, these uh, self-tapping screws. Looks like there's about four of them. Hopefully this is the way in. Otherwise it's going to be a real pain in the butt to get to any other part of this system because I've got, um, I've got duct work everywhere else can't get behind it very easily and I certainly can't get this first panel off very easily either. So they've put some um, some tape here and uh, this tape is probably like a thermal tape or an insulation tape and let's see and then we've got some insulation and yeah there's the ear handler ah there's the tray okay so I'm going to try not to destroy anything here and I'll get the camera and I'll show you what I'm doing. So this is the actual fan itself. You can see it's kind of dirty and yucky. And then right there, this should be our tray right here. And it looks pretty clean actually, which is good to know. Um, I'm going to have to stick my head in there and look further down because to the... To the right is where the drain, where the drain is, and um, I can't see anything right now. So I'm going to take a look at it. Um, let me set the camera back down. Okay, let's have a look. All right. That doesn't look too bad at all. So it's um. The tray is definitely um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? 
it's angled and tilted towards our drain, which is over here, which is over here. This is our drain line right here. So I'm very pleased to see how clean this is. That is good news. There's very little water in here. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, I've got these tablets that I bought from the local hardware store. And these are pan tablets. Uh, controls odor, overflows, and water damage uh, for air conditioners, dehumidifiers, blah, blah, blah. And the instructions say um, place two or more tablets in the condensate tray for each ton um, for your air conditioner. So I believe this is a four ton. It might even be a five ton. Um, position, position them the furthest away from the drain to assure complete treatment. Additional applications might be necessary. So uh, my tray is actually pretty darn clean, which I'm really happy to see. Um, but I wonder if, yeah. So yeah, it looks like the coils drip right into that pan, which is great. All right, so this is a lot easier than I thought. I'm gonna go ahead and take um, our tablets here. Hopefully it's easy open, otherwise I didn't bring a knife. And um, I'm going to have to reach back there. Um, it says not to put them near the, uh, the drain itself, but in my case, I don't have any water anywhere but near the drain. So I'm going to put a couple in the water and then a couple in the, around the perimeter um, so that um, I get good coverage. All right. So I'm sorry you can't see this. Oh, you'll see me reaching in there, though. All right, let's see. What we got? Yeah. Well, I'm really surprised that it's not as disgusting as I thought it was going to be. So I put my hand back here, and I can feel where there's just some dampness. It's not even a lot. And um, I'm going to go ahead and put it near the edges of the of the drain pan because that's where it's wettest and really scoot them back there and there's a there's like a tube that's funneling some of the, the water um, down and this way but the tray uh, tilts towards the drain line so this way the water runoff is going to hit this tablet as it comes off. It'll drip onto it and that may help clean it. So that wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, so now we'll just go ahead and uh, put the panel back on and power it back up and we should be good, good to go. Wash my hands, of course. All right. So I think, I think we've got everything taken care of. Um, to recap, yes, indeed, the, um, the float switch here was faulty it was triggering on the slightest amount of water and then it wouldn't reset i replaced it with a new one and now it has a higher tolerance the water has to be double the depth that it was before in order to trip this one but at least once this one trips and the water drains out um, it resets itself whereas the previous uh, float switch i had did not reset itself or at least not consistently so still needed to replace that, but it turns out really the significant problem was the condensate line itself um, was full of uh, this yeast, I think they say it is, that has built up over time. And so these tablets, hopefully over time, will help to, to clear that yeast out, it'll kill it, and then we'll get some nice easy flow. You may have seen in the, in the video I did outside that uh, it's dripping clear right now, and that's because I, I sucked it out with the wet, with the wet dry vac, with the shop vac. But um, you know that the lining of the pipe still has that gunk in there that didn't come out from sucking it out. So um, I have seen some people say to pour vinegar down here. Um, I'm not suggesting that you should or shouldn't, but uh, I'm approaching it in this, in this fashion. Um, the AC's been running fine now for several weeks um, uh, since, I, since I sucked out the drain. So um, hopefully this will be more of a preventative measure for any future problems. All right, I hope this helped you and uh
Um, if you liked it, uh, please click like, subscribe, and if you have any comments, uh, feel free to comment. Thank you.